people generate data, and we generate data in, as you know, expressed word, you know, in exponential rate. Um, so with connected devices, with how we communicate, you know, just how we think about our preference of communication. So data points is everywhere. And this, of course, impacts an organization like ours because who we help are also becoming connected. So the data points in the behaviors of those that live in conflict-ridden areas um, is changing dramatically, which is, means that we also have to change how we think about how we interact with them. So, you know, community engagement in the past used to be, you know, a hand on the shoulder, let me help you. And now it might as well be how do we help them through digital means and how do we connect with them differently than especially in areas where we don't have the same level of access to people that need our assistance. And when I say, you know, people in need, you know, this varies greatly. You know, we're not just talking about, you know, the classical cases of the 70s and 80s of living in, you know, poor developed areas. We're talking about areas that were booming with, you know, highly connected populations before war broke out, war broke out, and now finding themselves in a situation where basically, you know, your cell phone and your connectivity is becoming your lifeline and it's something you used to. And with growing populations of youth, this is also changing patterns and behaviors of what we call people that are affected by armed conflict and how they, uh, how they relate to and use their connected devices. So for an humanitarian organization, data is tremendously important to help us respond better, respond more timely, respond with, you know, in more appropriate ways so we have the right tools at our disposal. But it also poses great risks. And that's something uh, for my organization in particular, we invested a lot in trying to think about the data integrity and data protection element of it. So rather than just jumping on every single data point and thinking we're going to collect everything we have, we're going to create an advanced algorithm, we're going to run our systems you know, through these outsourced ways of doing decision making that you're referring to, we're also thinking that we are collecting data about some of the most vulnerable people at the most vulnerable state. When you looked at AI and, and, you know, a lot of times these discussions around these new technologies and impact on society ends up being a very kind of Western-oriented debate, you know, about loss of work and, you know, very important issues. But all of these issues and the applications of it look very different if you're standing in the streets of Aleppo, if you're running from war in Yemen, or if you are trying to find your bearings in southern Sudan. And, and that's important for us to also bring into the table because the algorithms doesn't make a difference, right? So you'll be m probably not surprised to know that one of the most downloaded apps in some of the most war-affected areas of the Middle East is also Facebook. Um, so I, I really believe in these settings. I think this is great that the UN is finally, because it's taken them a little bit of time, uh, initiative to really bring the UN family together to discuss these issues, discuss the whole set of impacts relating it to the SDGs, which is, some would argue, is really broad and therefore difficult to implement. But it's also the great backdrop to discuss you know, the you know, AI's implications that goes across every layer, it, perm it permeates every layer of our society, it transcends borders, demographies, everything. So I think it's great. Uh, I should say that, you know, with every multi-stakeholder process, it's also, you know, the risk of very quickly becoming politicized. So I think it's also important to, you know, some will say keep the eye on the price, you know, for X price, that's probably a relatable term, but really try to address what are we trying to achieve with this, to do what, for whom, and by whom. And we constantly, going back to my earlier comments, have to think about that this looks different depending on where you sit and where you are in your life cycle.